Now, when it comes to the people behind me, uh, their ideas on naming are quite original. The idea was that the moment birth was given, the father would exit the teepee and immediately rush on over and look at what was seen first. It could be a running bear, it could be um, anything for that matter. And that was supposedly the name that the child took on. Now, of course, one assumedly would want to position the exit of said TP facing something of interest. For example, plain plain, I don't think would work very well. That is certainly not how that culture derived its naming conventions in the least. And I make fun of the idea that that would be the approach simply to indicate that how and why we choose names for our characters is far more important than you might think. Hello and welcome to this Great Player video. My name is Guy and today we're going to be looking at that thorny issue of creating names. Now I have done a video on this on the past on the other channel that we no longer use. So this is a re-look at why names and coming up with a name for your character is so important and cannot be left to mere chance or shouldn't be left to mere chance if you want your character's name to have weight and to have meaning and to help you create a far more interesting backstory than you could possibly have hoped to create. We're going to look at the function of names, we're going to look at the personality of names, and then we're going to look at how to work it so that you get a name that is not only appropriate, but which helps you to make a much better character. And of course there's bonus material right at the end of the video for those of you that stick with me until then. So let's jump straight into it, shall we? In terms of the functionality of the names. Now, the function of a name is to inspire. That's its function. It inspires something. So when you hear the person's name, you can expect something, or you could relate to it, or it could inspire you, but one of these things, if not all of them, are going to happen when you hear that name. And this is something that I don't think we can help ourselves as humans. The moment you hear the name Grishnak Vaho, you go, well, that doesn't sound like someone who's going to be very polite or very nice, or possibly someone who has a good sense of humour. Maybe it does. But it inspires us certainly to think of something that's perhaps a bit rough, a bit angry, a bit aggressive from a culture that thinks in terms of these hard sounds, grich, nach, kosh, however you want to pronounce it. All of those kinds of things start to play in. So the function of a name is very, very important. So when you look at the character and you go, oh, my character's name is Daphne. Does it, what does it inspire? Daphne is an old, old name. It could inspire someone of wisdom. It could inspire someone who has this almost goddess-like presence. It could also inspire from the 70s and 80s where Daphne is a bit of a common name and Daphne is a bit daft. She's a bit, bit you know, not all together there. She's Daphne. She's Daffers, right? <laughs> you know, so it depends on your background personally, of course, and it depends on where you've grown up, but it, it, it does certainly help you start to relate. The Daffers of the 70s, you know, oh, good old Daffers. Yeah, she's always down there. We like to have a bit of a laugh when we get around to it. That Daphne is approachable, someone who possibly smokes a lot of cigarettes. I don't know. I don't know where this is coming from, um, but is generally a nice person. Daphne, who is a goddess or who's an oracle and works within the greater sanctuary of a specific goddess, that's someone who's, I think, a little bit more serene, a little bit calmer, a little bit more collected. So the name needs to do these things. You need to relate to the name. You need to be inspired by the name. You need to bring and draw on your expectations. When you hear the character name, what do you expect from that character? Oh, and I hear this name, I expect this. So then why is it that? Now, you could very well even use that as a technique. Well, I expected a warrior, but the character's actually a poet. Yes, they rebelled against their name. There's nothing wrong with that. But that starts to give us personality. 
which leads us on to our next section is the personality. So the name and the choice of name and the choice of how it's going to apply to the character is fairly complex. It could be strong or it could be weak. Generally, a strong name is a name that is fairly self-contained, doesn't have any open-ended vowel sounds at the end of it, is something that is going to inspire confidence. A weak name often has an open sound to it. A lot of people consider the name Hugh a weak name simply because it's such a soft name. There's no, Hugh, you, you can say it that way, but it doesn't... Most people are just going to say Hugh. Most people are going to say, hey, Hugh. And then when Hugh turns around, they go, no, no, not Hugh, you. That kind of childish behavior certainly could be inspired by that because no one would expect Hugh to punch back. Uh, Jack, on the other hand, might be strong. And if you said Jack uh, is an idiot, Jack might punch you because there's a certain strongness to the name because of the sharp sounds to it. Are they aggressive or are they insipid? Again, strong versus weak is strong of character versus lacking in character. Aggressive is someone who's violent, purposefully violent, versus someone who's never going to fight back at all and who's completely timid. What names conjure up this? And when you've got your character name, and you link this together, you go, well, where does my character fit? And finally, is it serious or is it funny? Sometimes you have a very serious name. My name is Gandalf the Grey. As opposed to the other one, and this is an homage to the original video, uh, my, my name is Graham. Uh, Graham uh, the Paisley. Hello, everybody. Funny versus serious. And I always find that players sometimes go with funny names, even in a serious campaign. And oftentimes that derails things because the GM is going, and you, Gandalf, what do you do? And you, Elrond, what do you do? And you, Legolas, what do you do? And you, Plaid, Plaid, what do you do, Plaid? Mm. See, it doesn't doesn't work. So the whole idea, the whole idea is to compare what personality does the name inspire. And again, you can have a very strong name and the character is weak, a very uh, uh, passive name, but a very aggressive character. They're aggressive because their name is so passive. Everybody thinks that I'm this pushover just because my name happens to be pushover. Right? So there's, there's things. Little John was a humorous take on the fact that he was this very big man. So you can use it and play with it, but compare it with the name that you've got. So how do we come up with the names in the first place? Well, this is my favorite part. We work that name. We work it indeed. Lots of people go, oh, I have no idea how to create names. I hate creating names. This is my favorite part. So vowel swap is the first thing that we do. So simple, simple, simple example. Lucy, the name Lucy, L-U-C-Y. Very, very simple. Let's do some vowel swapping. So Lucy, let's say, becomes Lessie. If we put an E in there, Lissy, Lissy could be a name. Uh, Lossy, not very good name, Lossy. So let's go and replace the Y. I know it's not a vowel, but it does do the function of a vowel. It's an E. So what if we change it to L? Uh, to to L to A. So then we have uh, Luca. Okay, that's a real name. So let's change the U. So Lecker, Lucker, Locker, Los. If we put an E instead of on the C, mm, Losu, Lasu, Lesu, Lusu, Lusu could work. Maybe Lucy's not a great idea. Let's try a different name. So you can vowel swap, change out the vowels and still you, until you start getting this name, which you start going, well, that's, not a pretty, that's a pretty good name, actually. I quite like that. The example in the original video was we went with Graham and we replaced the two A's with an E and an I. So you get Graham. So Graham is an interesting name from a vowel swapping perspective. Then we look at function or at location. How does the function of the person affect their name? So <clears throat> let's choose another example. Let's uh, go with the name of, say, Luke. 
and let's change it to Lyco. Lyco, what's their function? Lyco is a blacksmith. So could their name be Lyco Smith or Lyco the Black? Could it be Black Lyco? That could be something interesting. Lyco Smith is a fairly common name. So what if it's Lyco Iron, Lyco Hammersmith, Lyco Forge? Uh, Lyco, you can play around with their function, what they do. If they're a warrior, Lyco Blade, Lyco Edge, Lyco Cut, Lyco Stab. I mean, you can really play around with it, figure out what you do, and then you can bow swap it. So Lyco Stab becomes Lyco Stub, Lyco Stib. Again, just playing around with these things. Where are they from? Oftentimes our names denote where we come from. So Lyco of Meredith, Lyco of Meredith, certainly sounds to me like it could be the name of potentially a hero. Um, perhaps, uh, not sure, not sure. Uh, Lecky of Ghent or Lecky of Hawak, Hawak, who knows? I mean, these are different locations within a world that I created. So. Function and location, you can add on as the second name or as the third name for that matter. And again, play around with those vowels, you start to get some interesting names. And then racialize it. Now, this is a very contentious point. But I mean, if you are playing with a, let's say, Star Trek game, and you want to create a Klingon, and you call your Klingon Sam, perhaps that's their human version of their name, or that's the name that they use when they're around humans. But their, their real name is Samoch. House of Koch, perhaps. But if it's just Sam, if you've settled on Sam, by making it Samoch or Samok, you're adding on two little letters to make it feel more like the race that it's coming from. How do you know about the race that it's coming from? How do you get that sense? Ask your GM. It's as simple as that. Hey, what do uh, halflings sound like in your world? Are they sort of Irish? So Sam becomes uh, Samwise or uh, Samil or um, Sam becomes Eam because who knows why? Uh, just it's weird pronunciation, right? So by racializing it, you start to make this very interesting name with its own functions and locations built into it. You end up with this amazing name, which, to be perfectly honest, was just a bunch of letter moving around, and you've got this great thing. So that's my take on naming in broad strokes and how to come up with the name of your character and why you should. In terms of bonus material for you having sat through the last 13 minutes, it gives us a whole bunch of questions as far as I'm concerned. So if we look at Lockie Smith, Lockie Smith, for lack of, or let's, let's change it to Lockie Smath. I don't know why we go with Smath, but anyway. Lockie Smath. The Smath family. Are they known to be good blacksmiths? Are they known to be good librarians? What is the name of the family known for? Most families have something. Oh, the so-and-so's at the corner of the street. They're the loud ones. They've got the screaming child. They've got the loud piano. They've got the this. They've got the that. So what are they known for? This gives you family links. Mr. and Mrs. Smath, the father and the mother. What do they do? Who are they? So just from that one name. So it gives you a whole lot of questions. Do they call themselves, perhaps their name is Lockie Smath, but they actually just call themselves, um, or their nickname is Locksmith. Oh, why did you get the Locksmith? Well, because Lackey's, or Lockie Smith, Locksmith, it kind of uh, stuck. Do they like that nickname? Do they not like that nickname? All of those kinds of things. You can just, just from questioning the name, how do you feel about your own name? Think about your own name. Think about the history that's involved in your own name. If you don't know, ask your parents. Hey, where did I get this name from? Is it grandfather's? Is it, is it, could, did you read it on the side of a bus? <clears throat> Who knows? Then check with the GM. Always check with the GM. Hey, is this name appropriate for the race that I'm playing? Is this name appropriate for the time period? Is this name appropriate for the style and the tone and the mood that you're going for? 
Biggest Dickus might be funny, but it might not be appropriate. Uh, sorry, there are no pythons in this particular adventure. Who knows? And then add the family that goes with it. Extrapolate. Father and mother. Go further back. Grandfather and grandmother. Do you need all of that? Well, if you have it, you can start to build stories. Well, my grandfather, old Pappy Smuth, Smath, I think Smath was the name. Old Pappy Smath, we used to call him Papa Smurf. Yes, yes, oh, how he laughed. Until he fell into a vat of blueberries. Then we didn't call him that anymore because then he would turn this sort of purple colour because he'd get very angry, only he was still blue from falling into the vat. So what a wonderful little piece of character background story which sounds so farcical it might just be true. What a wonderful thing to have the ability to give names to things and then to have them inspire all of this additional stuff. So naming for me is one of the most important things and it's one of the things I do first. I always do it first. I don't come up with the character concept, I come up with the name. And the name gives me its function, it inspires me, it gives me what I expect from the person, it gives me their personality. And then I change and play around with that name once I've kind of got the first ideas of it and start to look and see really where it leads to. I like names, I really do. I hope you do too. Until next time, however, I wish you and yours the very happiest of playing 